I have procrastinated long enough on this project and I don't know why because I'm super excited to do this and share this with you today. We are going to be taking apples, honey, a couple of raisins, and some spiced apple juice, all natural spiced apple juice, combining that together and making mead. Mead is a honey fermented wine or a fermented honey wine where instead of grapes and sugar and a commercial yeast packet to make traditional wine, we're using an all natural fruit. We are using honey as our sugar and we're gonna use raisins as the natural yeast kickstarter because uh, raisins have a natural yeast on their skin and so it's a way to actually ferment the mead without adding any commercialized yeast and so this is going to be the second time i've ever done this i'm super excited to do this by the way because i have been trying to do this for about five ish months and like i said totally procrastinated um, but here we are, we're gonna get this done. Here was the first time. This is a strawberry mead and it's delicious. It is so good. So I made this about a year ago. I entered it into our North Carolina State Fair last year and y'all, <laughs> I got second place. I don't even know how. <laughs> And this is not boasting. This is like amazement. I don't even know how. But my strawberry mead got second place in the state fair. And so this year I'm like, all right, let's do it again. Let's do a different flavor and let's go for first. And what I think, if I remember correctly with the judge's notes, the reason I'd gotten second is because I had sediment here on the bottom. Oh, there you can see it a lot better there as things are fermenting, right? Things are breaking down. It's gonna be fermenting for at least four months. Sometimes it can go up to six months. And the solids kind of start breaking down into tiny little particles. And that's the sediment that can come down on the bottom. And so when I had transferred it out of my gallon jug and into my Grolsch bottles to enter into the state fair, I didn't quite siphon it as well as I could have. But lesson learned, we're gonna try better this year. So it's going to take a few months to ferment. The state fair is in October. I believe all entries will need to be entered in either the last week in September or the first week in October. So I'm really cutting it close right now with us being in June, June, July, August, September. I'm hoping I can get these fermented in a good four months and that way I can enter it in. So I have all of these gorgeous apples that I picked up from my Azure order just a couple of days ago. We're gonna be using a few of those. And I also have a jar of apple pie filling from our pantry. We don't make pies, we don't really eat pies. And the filling is from 2021. So clearly we're not really making and eating pies. I thought it would be a great use to add the apple pie filling into our recipe. Now I have to state and clarify though that my filling is really just sliced apples within a light sugar syrup. It's, there's no clear gel, there's no thickener because I just don't really like to use that stuff. I'd, I'd rather thicken it at the time of whatever I'm making when I need to make it. And so this is really just sliced apples in a light syrup. And so it works perfectly to add into our jars. So I already did that. I've got half of my quart in one and half of my quart in the other. And so we're gonna be doing two gallons of this honey mead, the apple spiced honey mead. I'm hoping it's a really delicious fall flavor for the state fair. And so I've already got that in. Um, we're just going to cut up three apples and split those chunks up between the two gallons. Now y'all are going to be asking for recipes and I'm sorry. There's no tried and true. You can, you can probably look on the internet for some tried and true calculations. I am just kind of going with 
my gut and kind of what I know from last year, which is really about the bottom inch and a half to two inches is what I'm going to be covering with our fruit solids. Then we're gonna be adding about a pint of honey into each gallon. Uh, we're also going to be adding in some of our juice and then topping it with filtered water shaking it up and putting on our airlock to let it start the fermentation process. All right, that was a lot. Let's just start chopping and we'll go through it. All right, so I'm just chopping my apples and putting them in. I have three apples, so the goal is to do one and a half on each, but we'll see. I don't wanna overfill it with too much fruit. And I'll be kind of sharing updates and progress of this as time goes on. Like I said, I do expect this to take a full four months, possibly more. Now, if you wanted to do this at home, you can easily do this with just about any fruit. Um, the trick though is to make sure that you have enough of honey uh, to really kickstart and let the yeast feed on. So the sugar is what the yeast would feed on. Uh, and you can certainly add granulated sugar if you want to, but then you're not really making mead <laughs> because mead is fermented wine, honey. So you wanna make sure if you're using honey too that you're using raw honey, truly raw, not heated in any way because there's some really, not only just good properties within honey when it's raw, but for this purpose, you wanna make sure that you have all of those natural um, bacteria and yeasts, right? Like all of the really natural things that are occurring in raw honey, because again, that's going to help with the fermentation process. Okay, our jars are full. I'm gonna show you. So certainly more than the two inches, but it's going to start to really kind of break down but I think that looks great all right let's add our honey in this honey is a little crystallized so hopefully we don't have too many issues here getting it in without making a mess All right, there's a lot of honey still left in here. I'm just gonna take some of my juice and mix it in to help loosen up some of the crystallized bits. I'm pretty type A in some regards, and I don't do well with messes. <laughs> so this is like bothering me a bit, but I'm not cleaning up until we're done. All right, I am gonna finish adding this particular jar of juice. All right, let's set this one aside and get the honey. And this one, and this is honey from our own beehives. I think they're from different years because honey is just one of those things that never goes bad. Look how gorgeous that is. Um, but I love that we're using honey from our own bees, our own property. Just makes this extra special. Okay, I am going to split this last jar up because there's just no need to keep it. This is what I had bought it for, so this is what we're gonna use it for.
Okay, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I had to clean up the counter and the jars a bit. Um, all that's left is to add some raisins and our filtered water, shake it up and put our air lick, air lick, air lock lid on top. I wanted to tell you, um, maybe, maybe honey mead isn't your thing, right? Totally get it. But this process is exactly how a lot of the wines from Dry Farm Wines who is a distributor. I know there's sometimes a lot of confusion with that. Dry Farm Wines is a wine distributor from very highly selected wines from all over the world, mostly Europe, because Europe has just, I think, such better um, policies and practices when it comes to food, right? And what's what's allowed when it comes to like artificial colors and preservatives, and in this case, yeasts. All of the wines in the Dry Farm collection are made with natural yeasts, just like we're gonna be doing with our raisins. They are not packaged, commercialized yeast, which for some people, including myself, can actually cause a little bit of inflammation, um, kind of an autoimmune reaction. I don't do well with yeast, and so I really try not to eat yeast bread. I, that's why I do sourdough 100% in our kitchen. I have active dried yeast. I just prefer not to use it. But again, if I'm ever going to have a glass of wine or a glass of alcohol, it's always a dry farm wine bottle that has been fermented with natural yeast or homemade mead, which is exactly what we're doing. There is a link down below where you can get a bottle for a penny for your first order of dry farm wines if you're interested. All right, I am just going to add about a small handful of raisins to each. Again, the reason we're doing this is that grapes and subsequently raisins have a lot of natural yeast already on their skin. So it helps to promote the fermentation, right? With the good bacteria starting to eat away at the sugars. Okay, so now we're going to top with filtered water. I just filled my water in my juice jars. All right, I'm not gonna go any further than that. I really do want some room for some of the gas bubbles to accumulate, right? To not have any kind of bubble over. So I'm gonna leave it right there. So you know your mead is done fermenting when it's really clear. The clarity is like crystal clear. See that? You can kind of see through the bottle. Whereas right now, very cloudy. So all of the solids will kind of go to the bottom. The liquid becomes very clear. And that basically means that your yeast have really eaten through and digested all of the sugars. And it will take anywhere from four to six months. Um, also, this is gonna be kind of carbonated as it goes through that process. If you think about, if you're familiar with making kombucha, again, very similar process where you're adding your sugar and your fruit and the scooby, the symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast are eating through those sugars and they're creating this gorgeous kind of carbonated effect like a fun, healthy soda. But if you let it go long enough, that carbonation will go away, right? And then there's nothing, it's just flat. That's what's gonna happen here. There'll be no more carbonation, it'll be flat, which is what you want with your mead. You're not trying to drink a carbonated alcoholic drink. You're drinking a very smooth, lightly sweet and fruity flavored drink. Okay, I'm gonna put a lid on these, shake them up really well. This is not the lid that came with my jars. I can't find it. So I'm hoping this doesn't work or this works and doesn't create a mess, but it might not. Just enough to mix some things around. Okay, I'm just gonna clean up the outside here. 
because inevitably you'll have some sort of fruit fly being attracted to the fermentation gases, the off-gassing. So you just want to have anything on the neck or the bottle that can attract them also. Last but not least, we're going to put our air locks on. I'm going to put a little water in here and the water level will kind of even out between these two sides. That allows the fermentation gases to leave, but not, and so you'll see a bubble and when it bubbles, they're, they're leaving, but not allow anything else in. That's it. Our two gallons are ready to begin fermenting. I probably won't see too many changes over the next two to three days, but after that, I should start to see some kind of bubbling and foaming. And again, I'll share in subsequent videos how this is looking and how it's doing. But for now, it's just gonna go sit on the counter. It's gonna go in the pantry, our front room pantry long-term, but for now, I'm gonna keep it in the kitchen just so I can keep an eye on it and make sure things are looking good. Don't forget to hit subscribe so we can keep up with how this is doing. Stay healthy, stay well. I'll see you next time.